medicine is all about one weird tricks. It's clickbait and it's uh, scammy. I had somebody yeah. comment on my TikTok channel a few months ago and they said one weird trick. And it was sort of a mock of me because I'm not taking insurance, not since 2005. And since I don't take insurance, I have to get my own patients. I have to do some, some marketing. I have um, several other practitioners that work in my office. I, I'm in charge of the marketing. I love doing marketing and education. But you can see sometimes there's some really cheesy ads, like one weird trick to lose 40 pounds or something like that. So he was mocking me by tape, typing in one weird trick. And I thought about this for a long time. And I had a realization yesterday about medicine and the fact that they rely on weird tricks in order to get you to buy their stuff. So I made a PowerPoint presentation, so bear with me on this. It's very interesting. So one weird trick, how medicine fools you, how targeting chemicals with poisons keeps you buying. In the bottom right corner, I have this bottle of pills that says, new miracle cure, truly amazing, works in minutes, guaranteed. So there's four stages of wound healing. We have to start here. So I don't care if the wound is like right on your hand, like you cut your skin or it's inside your body. And there are many symptoms that occur in this process of wound healing. So if you look at my cursor, the wound occurs at the beginning and you have this increase in inflammation and swelling and activity to heal. And then you have a decrease and then resolution. And there's four stages of healing. Number one, hemostasis, that means stopping the blood. Number two, inflammation, that's edema, swelling, redness. Number three is proliferation, that is new cells going into the area that was damaged to uh, regenerate that tissue. And number four is remodeling. So that means uh, creating muscle tissue, skin tissue, connective tissue, bone, et cetera, and then and some scar tissue. And then you end up with a healed wound. Now, inflammation is step two in the healing process. And you'll see over and over again throughout regular media and what medical doctors say, they say inflammation is the cause of disease. Inflammation is not the cause of disease at all. Never, it was never, ever the cause of disease. It is step two out of the four steps of wound repair, whether that's outside of your skin or inside of your skin. Inflammation is step two of wound repair. Remember that. It is not the cause of disease. Now, all four of these steps include descriptions, which I'm gonna go over very quickly. Hemostasis means stopping the bleeding. Hemo is blood, stasis is stop. So if you look to the left, it says stop bleeding, constrict the blood vessels, platelet, a platelet plug is formed, coagulation, the fibrin plug is formed. And then under inflammation, edema, swelling, redness, pain, increased circulation, Proliferation, that's the new cells dividing quickly, so it's increased cell division, macrophages, fibroblasts, and granulation, that means like small protein particles coming in to be part of this matrix of new uh, tissue being formed to repair. And under remodeling, the last step, we have collagen, scar tissue, and new blood vessels. That's what happens at each step. But what makes that happen? Chemicals do. Natural biochemicals, they heal. Each of these chemicals are helping you recover from trauma, whether that trauma is chemical or physical, whether it's inside your body or outside of your body, whether it comes from an infection or toxins. Every single one of these is beneficial in the cycle of healing. Keep that in mind as I go through the rest of these slides. So I'm gonna give you some examples. Now, don't worry that you don't know what these mean. I'm just gonna say some of these words. So under hemostasis, we have clotting factors, platelets, factor XA, PD-L1, thromboxanes, and cyclooxygenase. Under inflammation, we have histamines. I'm sure you heard of that because people take antihistamines when they have allergies. Mast cells, cytokines, prostaglandins, interleukins, 6 and 2, antibodies, bradykinins, and then B and T lymphocyte cells. Those are white blood cells. Under proliferation, we have interleukin-22, PDGF, TGF. Every time you see GF, think growth factor. So you have the beginning of the repairing of the tissue of the wound, and you need to grow tissue, so therefore growth factor. We have FGF, VEGF, 
TGF. Okay, under remodeling, we have interleukin-10. Notice that there's interleukins kind of spread throughout. There's a lot of them. And there's also bradykinins, different bradykinins spread out. But under remodeling, we also have HDL. You've heard of that, one of the cholesterols. And then lipoprotein A, one of the really, really bad cholesterols, or lipoproteins, I should say. And then substance P and then MMP9. Let's talk about some of these. Okay, now, again, don't worry about the fact that you don't know what these are. Just remember, they are chemicals that facilitate wound healing, and they are all good for you. Every one of them is beneficial. Your body or Mother Nature or God or whoever, put those there so that you can heal from a cut on your skin. So if you have a wound, whether inside or outside, there is a cause. Now, inside the body, the cause is not that you fell down and scraped your knee. The cause is internal. And here are the internal causes of damage to your tissues inside your body. Chronic infections, toxins, and bad diet. Under the term chronic infections, we have parasites, Lyme, yeast, chronic bacteria, viruses, fungi, candida, mold, and then the mold mycotoxins. Those are really bad. And then other toxins include chemicals, metals, and radiation. Half of Americans are drinking radium in their water. Seed oils and excess sugar, these are damaging to the body. So that's in the, our diet. And it's a finite number of causes of chronic illness. When these cause damage, you have quite a large number of potential diseases and symptoms that you can get. So a disease is simply a collection of symptoms. And then you go to a doctor and they say, oh, you have endometriosis, PCOS, estrogen dominance, autism, ADHD, fever, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, allergies, asthma, dementia, chronic pain, rashes, fatigue, depression, autoimmune diseases. This is a very small list. It can go on and on and on. And the list of symptoms, there's, you know, 200 different symptoms you can get from 10 or so causes of chronic disease. You can get dozens, hundreds of symptoms and diseases. Now, I want to go through all four of those stages of wound healing again and give you an, ex an idea that every single one of these chemicals that mediate the four stages can be blocked by a drug. Hemostasis, that's where you stop the bleeding, has these chemicals. Cyclooxygenase is the first one. And how do you block cyclooxygenase? Acetaminophen. That's what acetaminophen is designed for. So that's pain. Cyclooxygenase causes pain. So when you take your finger and you bring it closer and closer to a fire, you get pain. You need that signal so that you stop putting your finger near the fire. Or if you are holding on to a pointy thing and you poke it at your fingertip and it causes pain, your body's saying, stop doing that. You need cyclooxygenase and thromboxanes. That's the second one here. You need those to tell you to stop being stupid. But in chronic disease, you can block the thromboxanes with aspirin and NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Here's factor XA that has to do with stopping the bleeding. And how do you block that um, natural chemical? Xarelto and Eliquis, these are blood thinners. Same thing with Plavix, Warfarin, and Heparin. They block these natural factors that are trying to heal your body. Under the second stage, we have inflammation. And there's a lot here. So B and T lymphocytes, that's your white blood cells. That's part of inflammation because once you cut your skin, now bacteria can go in there and cause inf infection. So you need an increase in B and T lymphocytes. But there is a drug to stop that. It's called cyclosporine. And another one called rituximab. And there's a lot, of, there's a lot more of these chemicals here. I just put in some. And there's a lot more drugs. I just put in some drugs. So here we have interleukin 6 and 2, and here's two drugs that I don't even know how to say the name. Prostaglandins, you can use steroids, NSAIDs, and misiprostol. Cytokines can be blocked by Humira, which is the number one selling drug in the United States, Humira, because people have rheumatoid arthritis and joint pain, and they take this drug and it stops it. And... But they're not getting to the cause, right? Go back and find the parasite, get that out, get the toxins out. Enbril, Remicade, that's all to stop cytokines. 
mast cells can be stopped with steroids, Zolaire. There's this thing called mast cell activation syndrome. It's like a silver bullet program. Like here's the one drug it's going to cure you. It's one weird trick. And so here's cytokines and this is Humira. So Humira is the number one most sold drug in America right now. There's also Enbrel, Remicade and others. They all stop cytokines. So we're matching up a drug with a chemical and we're blocking that or lowering that natural biochemical. The chemical is trying to heal your body. All the drugs try to stop the healing of your body because the healing process has some symptoms and people become uncomfortable. They don't like it. And just like when you cut your hand, I had 10 stitches put on this middle finger a few years ago. I had trouble sleeping. It was, it was painful. I did have to take one or two um, pain medications. And over the course of two years, it healed, but it bothered my typing. It, you know, was hindrance to my natural work abilities, you know, with typing, there's that discomfort, but get through it and have the right tools to heal your body and take the least amount of drugs possible. Histamines, you know, for allergies, people take Zyrtec, Claritin, and Allegra, but what causes the allergies? Uh, you might be eating the wrong foods. You got a parasite in your body somewhere. You got candida in your body somewhere. You got toxins and your sinuses are creating a lot of fluid and mucus because there's yeast in there. Get to the cause. That's the point. Medicine is completely missing the um, whole aspect of correct healing. The third stage of wound healing is called proliferation. And I was talking about the growth factors here. And there is a drug for every single one of these growth factors, except for interleukin-22, drug research is in progress. So again, these growth factors are to repair your tissue and they can go up and they can be up for a long time because during this cycle of healing, see it goes up and then it goes down. During that cycle, uh, your body can be stuck because the parasite you've had in your body for 10 years has never left. The immune system is weak and it can't get it out and you need the herbs to get it out or the drug, the antiparasitic drugs to get it out. So that's where disease comes from is the inability to heal because of toxins and pathogens that are not leaving. Under the fourth stage of healing, we have remodeling. So substance P, for example, um, it causes pain. And so there's nerve blocks for it. There's this drug for it, MMP-9. All drug trials have failed so far to try to squash or block MMP-9. There's bradykinins, they can cause high blood pressure. They're part of remodeling. So a high amount of bradykinins can be stopped by lisinopril. That's a blood pressure medication. Lipoprotein A, that's under investigation. HDL, it's the only good biochemical on this whole list, according to medicine, but yet they're all good. They're just, um, there just needs to be healing done when you get to the cause. And that for interleukin-10, there's no drugs for that. So I just went over all these natural substances right here that go through the four stages of healing. And it just showed to you that every single one can be blocked. And if there's not a drug to block it, they're working on it. This is medicine for you. So instead of trying to increase healing, they block it. So what happens though, if you just focus on that, the more drugs you take here, the more expensive it is and the sicker you get, a main side effect is weaker immune system, which is you need a strong immune system to clear up these causes. And another main side effect is polypharmacy. So when you have one chemical that's high, you add a, a drug to block it, then you can pop up another chemical. Then you add another drug to block that. And it's like playing whack-a-mole. You can have five, six chemicals pop up causing symptoms. Then you add another drug for the next one and the next one and the next one. This is how people end up on six, seven, 10, 20 different medications because the doctors are just playing whack-a-mole and they're never getting to the cause. If you focus over here and get to the cause, the more effective supplements, medications, and nutrition you take, the less expensive it is and the better you get. Getting back to this, the battle between natural healthcare and drugs is biblical. So 2000 years ago in the, the, the Bible's Concordia, which is like the dictionary, it says medicine is sorcery. It says pharmacia is poison. So pharmacology is a study of poisons. So I'm going to say it again, medicine is sorcery. They knew this 2000 years ago. It blocks healing. That's their, that's what they're doing. They're, that's how they make their money. They stop your body from healing. It's fake help. It profits on suffering. It takes your income weekly 
regardless of outcome. So there's taking your money through Medicare and Medicaid right before you even see that money, it's gone. They take your money monthly with insurance premiums and they take your money at every visit with deductibles and co-pays. Regardless of how much good they do for you, they're taking your money in four different ways. And if you don't want to participate in this type of healthcare, it doesn't matter. You still pay them through your paycheck, through your insurance. It's forced. So when you get back over here to natural holistic healthcare, it facilitates healing. It removes toxins and pathogens. It profits on health improvement and it's a free market enterprise. So I haven't taken insurance since 2005. And if somebody wants to bail on my program because they're not getting results or they lost their job or whatever reason, they're out. They just leave. And I can't go back into their paycheck once a week. I can't take their monthly insurance um, premiums or deductibles or co-pays. They are, they are out of that um, economy. This is two different cultures. It's two different economies. So the one is forced on you and it drugs you. And then this one that I'm involved in, nothing's forced on you. It's the free market. You can make your own decisions. If you're in it, you're in it. And if you decide to get out of it, guess what? You're out of it. It's your choice. And you can go see another holistic doctor. You can go on Amazon, buy some supplements. You can change your diet. You can watch a bunch of YouTube videos on different diets. It's totally up to you. Nothing's forced on you as opposed to drug-based medicine. Somebody made a comment on my YouTube channel saying, I wish I had good doctors like you in Australia. And then somebody else posted a comment under that saying, I wish I had the same good doctors like you in England. And my response to both of them was, sorry, but you have socialized healthcare. And socialism breaks up any need for innovation and improvement. So because I have not been in the socialized slash insurance field since 2005, I have to innovate. I have to keep learning. I try new things. I get rid of things that don't work. And I'm free to do this because I don't have some third party telling me what to do or what to not do. It's between me and the patients only. So there is a big difference between socialized um, industrial healthcare medicine versus getting people well. I want to go back to this slide and tell you a story. I had a conversation. It was an hour long with a holistic doctor. I think he was a DO and he was in charge of the whole state of Michigan veterans administration hospital system at that time. This is a long time ago. And we had this fascinating conversation and we went back and forth on our philosophies for an hour. We agreed with everything until the very end. There is one thing we disagreed on. And that is this, I said that the body can heal itself. And he said, the body cannot heal itself. That is the ultimate division between natural healthcare and drug-based medicine. So it's obvious when you cut your skin, the body's healing itself. That's obvious. Everybody knows that, but they're taught in medical school that the body can't heal itself. It's sick. But the problem is you got to remove those toxins and those pathogens, these things on the left. And medicine sucks at this, I'll be honest. They suck at parasites, Lyme, yeast, chronic bacteria. They're great with acute bacteria. They're fantastic with acute bacteria. But chronic bacteria, they have not a clue. Viruses, fungi, candida, mold, and then the mycotoxin, they suck at all of these. And they're horrible at getting rid of chemicals, metals, and radiation. Their diets are horrible. There's medical doctors on TikTok promoting sugar and seed oils. Can you believe that? These are gar This is garbage. Every single one of these things, medicine sucks at. But they're really good at blocking your body's own natural uh, facilities to repair. That's what they excel at. They block your body's ability to repair. This is the last slide, and it is the epitome of the failure of medicine because they treat diabetes. And that's the problem. Treating diabetes is the problem. They're not preventing it. So when you look at this yellow line, it goes at the very left, 1958. It's the percentage of people in America with diabetes. And in 2015, all the way to the right, that percentage is about 7.5% of the population with diagnosed diabetes. The blue line is the number of people with diabetes. So 1958, it was about 1 million, maybe 2. And then it goes up. 
to about 24 and a half million Americans. Now, what's interesting about this graph is 1997. That's when the Atkins diet, there was a new book out about the Atkins diet. And that's when people were like, oh, let's go low carb. And they did. Boom. Look at that. It went down temporarily. And then the experts came out and said, oh, this is just a fad diet. It's dangerous. It's bad for you. It raises LDL. It's going to cause heart disease. Totally not true. So from 1958 to 2015, there's just been a continuous rise with uh, diabetes. And this is a total failure in medicine. They can't just be treating diabetes. They have to prevent it too. And that's with the dietary changes and getting rid of um, chronic infections. So there are people that have a really good diet and yet they still have diabetes because they have maybe an infection in their pancreas, their liver, they have liver dysfunction, they got parasites in their gut and all these things can um, exacerbate um, organ dysfunction. And the liver and the pancreas are the two most important organs to keep your blood glucose down uh, during, after, and then in between meals. And I wanna point one more thing out about this. The increase of consumption of sugar actually leveled off around 2000, right around here. So the sugar was up and then it leveled off right there. It's been level for 20 years now, but yet diabetes keeps going up. What else correlates with this? Two things. Number one, agricultural chemicals in our, in our food. And number two, seed oils. So a hundred years ago, the consumption of seed oil was 0.1% of our diet. Now it's like 8% of our diet. So that is a major problem causing a major disease. So now that you have this information, you can make some better decisions about your health and realize why medical doctors say the things they do. I've been forcing myself into conversations on social media, including uh, especially TikTok. And I'm, I can't believe what the medical doctors are saying. And so they're pushing ultra processed junk food, seed oils, sugar. I saw a video yesterday where there's a doctor talking about how sugar doesn't cause any harm. And uh, there was um, another doctor next to him drinking Mountain Dew, kind of showing off like, look, I'm drinking Mountain Dew and it doesn't cause any harm. To unbelievable. It's, it's criminal what these guys are saying. And then you get sick and then they promote drugs. And there was a doctor who's promoting uh, weight loss surgery. And he was promoting a diet that is a total failure at weight loss. So I'm just here to set the record straight. And with this um, series of slides I just showed you, it really it was uh, pre pretty exciting for me to put this together and have all these thoughts come flowing in. I was able to get this onto the PowerPoint pretty easily, but it makes you realize it's more concrete how ridiculous it is to take a drug and that's your one weird trick to cure MS because some of those drugs are labeled to cure depression, arthritis, you know, autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease. They're blocking one inflammatory marker or one remodeling marker or one. it's one weird trick. Like you're going to take one single pill and it's going to cure you of a disease. Medicine is all about one weird tricks. It's clickbait and it's uh, scammy. And instead it should be a program that takes six months to two years where you change your diet for the better. You're detoxing chemicals and metals. You're getting rid of uh, pathogens that are there for a long time. And it's not about one weird trick. It's not about one pill. It's not about one diet. It's about all the things that your body needs because you're different from everybody else. You, and you put together this program in the right order over time. You got to do the beginning steps at the beginning and do the ending steps at the end. You got to do it in the right order at the right time. And when you go from step one to step two to step three, you got to do it when your body's ready to go to the next step. So there's a lot of nuance and an expert in healthcare improvement who's been doing it for a number of years, such as I and my team in my office and others all around the country. There's a lot of people who um, know how to make your body healthier. That's the best healthcare. Health improvement is the best health insurance that there is. So keep on improving your health. If you need drugs, you need drugs. But the least amount of drugs that you take over time, the better off you're going to be and stay away from these ridiculous drug claims and promotion of horrible diets. You got to avoid these medical doctors like crazy. <laughs> they will drive your health into the ground. It's going to be very expensive. And modern healthcare, drug-based healthcare is the number one cause 
of bankruptcy in the country for 15, 20 years, even during the 2008 housing crisis, medicine was still the number one cause of bankruptcy. It wasn't housing. It was drug-based medicine. So if you need help with your health, you can contact my office. I'll put my phone number here at the end.